This is the Rion and Tyrion Bridge in Greece, one of the longest bridges in the world. It crosses some of the most active earthquake fault lines in Europe. It also sits in a powerful natural wind tunnel. And there's nothing solid at the bottom of the sea to build it on. To make matters worse, this coast is moving away from that coast every day. How did they ever build it? They face what would have been an impossible challenge if it weren't for some unusual connections. The hammock. Well, let's let it rip. <laughs> a fizzy pop can. Oh, no! There's a fire! Oh, this is... This is lovely. A toboggan. <laughs> Indian incense. These contain an oil that really does smell lovely. And a steel chimney. The Gulf of Corinth slices deep into mainland Greece, but at its western end, it's very narrow. To avoid a 280-mile detour around the mainland of Greece, you only need to cross this small stretch of water. Sounds simple. On one side of the Gulf of Corinth, Rion. On the other, Antirion. You see what they did? Rion, Antirion. A hundred years ago, the Greek Prime Minister dreamed of a bridge to connect the two places. Without some unprecedented engineering, that bridge would still be a dream. Almost three kilometres in length, the Rion and Tyrion Bridge is really long, but most incredibly, it's practically earthquake-proof. Which is reassuring, as it sits in one of the most active seismic zones in all of Europe. It can withstand shocks measuring 7.4 on the Richter scale, enough to completely destroy your average bridge. But surprisingly, shaking ground wasn't the first challenge earthquakes posed to the bridge builders. Before they could start, they had to deal with what lay at the bottom of the sea. For the engineers, this was always going to be a bridge over troubled waters. Yeah, I know, sorry, but it was. Just getting started was going to be a huge engineering challenge. In fact, when they began, they still didn't know how they were going to lay their foundations. The sea here is 65 metres deep. It's a challenge in itself, but at the bottom, there's nothing but sand and silt for hundreds of metres down. There's no solid bedrock. And no solid bedrock means no solid foundations. Solid foundations are, of course, crucial to any structure, especially when they're shaken by frequent earthquakes. Combining a sandy seabed with seismic activity results in a relatively little-known danger from earthquakes, called liquefaction. In a tremor, soft, wet ground literally turns to liquid, which really is as bad as it sounds. Nobody in the world had ever before set out to build a bridge in these conditions. The engineers came up with a solution that seems to defy logic. But first, why does a tremor turn sand and water into a liquid? I've created an earthquake machine to replicate the conditions at the bottom of the Gulf of Corinth. This engine is going to play the part of an earthquake. The sand and water can play themselves, and to get a bone-shaking feel for the problem, I'll be the bridge itself. If you add an earthquake to loose, wet ground, something pretty strange can happen, as I shall now demonstrate. Here we have the loose, wet ground. It's sand, 
with water, but it's, you know, solid enough. Standing in here quite happily. OK, if we're ready then, chaps, take it away. Now, my earthquake is starting. It is really very loud and very shaky. And straight away, I see water coming to the top. Clearly, what's happened is, apart from being deafened, I've sunk. It isn't just that the water's on the top, and I really have... I'm in the ground. So I need to find out what's happened. And to do that, I need to get out. And that's not very easy. OK, I am actually part of the ground now. Yeah. The ground holds me up fine before the earthquake. Then it turns into quicksand. As it's shaken, the whole thing changes from solid to liquid. It liquefies, and I sink. Geotechnical engineer Stuart Haig explains that the key is that the sand is wet. When the sand particles are shaken, the spaces in between them, or the pores, try and get smaller, and the water that's in there gets squashed, and the pressure goes up. Once that happens, whatever's standing on top of it, whether it's you or a building, sinks into the ground. Combine wet sand with seismic shocks, and it's a killer. When a huge earthquake hit Kobe Harbor, Japan, in 1995, over 6,000 people died. It measured 7.2 on the Richter scale. Sure enough, the ground was sandy and full of water. When the mix was shaken and stirred, the result was catastrophic liquefaction. Literally, the previously solid ground became liquid. Ordinarily, engineers can drain the sand to get rid of the water, or compact it so that the water is squeezed out. None of this was possible in the Gulf of Corinth. You can't drain the bottom of the sea, and there's sand to compact up to 500 metres deep, an impossible task. There was no solution in the bridge builder's manual, so the Rion designers had to come up with their own, which they did, thanks to incense. This is vetiver grass, and it's used to make incense, thanks to a sweet-smelling volatile oil in the roots. But it wasn't the oil they were after. <laughs> These are the roots hanging down in here. These contain an oil that really does smell lovely. Now, this grass originates in swamps in India, so harvesting it was horribly difficult, snakes and awful conditions. The growers soon learnt to grow it in places more convenient for harvesting, on riverbanks. And what they then noticed was that these roots, which can grow up to seven metres long in fully grown plants, stabilised the soft ground they were growing in. And that's what interested the bridge designers. The way that the long, thin roots of the vetiver grass stabilised riverbanks worked for the bridge engineers too. 